Mm-hmm. Oh, what's going on, guys? Ian Patrick here, and we are going to do a fun review tonight. Well, just a normal review, I guess, but tonight's movie review is The Monte Carlo Story. It came out in 1956, and it was directed by Samuel A. Taylor, who is very well known for directing Sabrina. He helped work on Hitchcock's Vertigo, so he's pretty well known. Um, it stars Marlene Dietrich and Vittorio De Sica. Now, this is an Italian-made movie. It would be the only Italian-made movie that Marlene Dietrich would ever be in. <laughs> um, and I'll get to some very interesting things that she had to say about the making of this movie. And actually, Vittorio De Sica, he... I took an Italian neorealism class once and I saw many of his films. He just made amazing films. My favorite of his was Shusha or Shoeshine. It's a fantastic film. He's most well known for directing The Bicycle Thief. Um, but he was actually originally going to direct tonight's movie, The Monte Carlo Story. But uh, things ended up a little differently and we ended up with Samuel Taylor directing it. Now the first thing I want to say about the Monte Carlo story is that it is a, it has beautiful scenes of the city. Beautiful scenes of Monte Carlo, beautiful scenes of the sea, the coast right next to the Monte Carlo and this is probably one of the reasons why I enjoyed it so much was just the scenery and I spent a little time in Italy um, in my life. I spent about four months living over there, so I could relate to a lot of the things in the movies. So I enjoyed it quite a bit for those reasons. Now that being said, it's not the most memorable movie, but I did, I would recommend watching it at least once. So the story of the movie though is Monte Carlo is a gambling city and Vittoria De Sica is a broke man. And every night he borrows some of his buddies' money because they believe in him. <laughs> and I don't know why they keep giving him their money, but he goes and gambles at the casino in Monte Carlo. He pretty much always loses. So they get fed up with him and they say, all right, we want you to marry a rich woman, a very rich woman. You're a good-looking guy. Let's find... So the movie is them trying to hook him up with a rich woman. Now, Marlene Dietrich shows up in the hotel where his buddies work, and they're like, oh, this, she's amazing. Um, she must be loaded because, of course, Marlene Dietrich is in a beautiful gown, beautiful clothes, beautiful jewelry, the whole nine yards because it's Marlene Dietrich. Now, it turns out that Marlene Dietrich herself is also broke and also has a gambling problem. So they both share that. Now, Desika does not know this, that she's broke, and she believes that Desika is very, very rich because his buddies make him appear to be rich, and it's very funny how they do it, um, but in fact, both are broke. <coughs> of course, they're both going to end up learning, <coughs> excuse me, they're, <coughs> they're both going to end up learning that each other are broke, so they, they find out um, Arthur O'Connell is in the film, and he he is a rich American, and um, Marlene Dietrich's like, okay, well, I need the money, so she starts to woo him, and uh, DeSica plays her, pretends to be her brother, and uh, it's kind of a love triangle, but Arthur O'Connell doesn't even know, isn't aware of it, but um, I won't give away the ending, but of course, Desika and Dietrich do fall in love. Uh, they fall in love very early in the movie, um, but it's a matter of whether they'll end up together or not um, because they're both <laughs> they're both broke. Um, so it's kind of a fun movie. As I said, the scenery is stunning. Um, I, I want to mention though that the romance between Desika and Dietrich is a little awkward. They 
apparently Desika didn't know like any English. Um, so the movie was dubbed. Uh, the love was a little awkward, but Desika and Marlene Dietrich are such natural actors that um, they were fan- they were great. Um, the love was awkward, but the acting was still good. Um, I have a lot I want to read from what Marlene Dietrich herself wrote in a letter to her. And there's a lot, a lot I want to read because it's, it's funny stuff. Marlene Dietrich really, really said some funny things. She was a little snobby, but, um, rightfully so, I guess. All right. So here we go. They, this is her, her words. And she's saying they, um, talking about Italians. They more or less mouth their lines like we do when we shoot a song and the soundtrack is playing. They do a silent picture and concentrate on the expression and the eyes and say the words rather tonelessly. I had a hard time playing to DeSica because there was no meaning to the lines. This all happened after they all, after they had just gotten over the shock that I was there in time or or there at all. The politeness is killing me. She goes on to talk about the other co-star, the young girl in the movie, um, played by Trundy. I can't remember her first name, but she was not the greatest. She was pretty annoying, actually, but this is what she said. The young girl in the film is called Trundy. Never made a film and looks not only 12 years old, but also has my hair color and the complexion plus a few freckles. I thought they were kidding because in the script there is a lot of talk of being 22, but to choose the same color hair for the woman in the same film seems ridiculous. Everybody says it wasn't his fault, and that's how it was until at midnight we saw the rushes in the local cinema, and I saw her on the screen. I finally said to Sam Taylor, who takes director's credit on the screen? She said to him, I don't think it's funny anymore. He then asked me to put my foot down and asked the producer to change the girl. He said he couldn't do it. Well, you know that my hands are tied because I can see the stories in print when the girl returns home. I was jealous. She looked too young, etc. Desika gambles all night at the casino. And this is talking about Desika during production her saying it. Tasika gambles all night at the casino and I see him only during the day when we work. He's charming but a little stiff, very conscious of his profile, this being the first part of an elegant man and lover. His makeup is thick and pasty and I told him last night that in America people will laugh at a man who looks made up. Men don't make up with grease in Hollywood. For color, they have a water-soluble makeup, which does not show just for color's sake. Sam Taylor said, I know nothing about all these things. The little, very good cameraman was very sad, and DeSica was still gambling and had, and had not seen anything. I suggested they get another makeup man and make tests with DeSica before we get into the indoor scenes. Which, by the way, will almost all be made here in the actual in the actual hotel lobbies restaurants and gambling rooms um no mirror no light no place to stretch out or take your clothes off in this heat she's talking about her dressing room (laughs) she goes on to complain more about oh man she doesn't stop complaining about about her makeup um artist it's a little italian man who can barely speak English, but I won't read all that. But it didn't sound like Marlene Dietrich was having too much fun on set of <laughs> of this f- film. But also I want to read a little bit what the director said about Marlene. Sam Taylor. Marlene was exceptionally professional. Never any trouble, always prepared, always did exactly what you told her. There was some fake publicity about her romance, but she wasn't interested in Desika at all. They hardly spoke to each other off the set. 
DeSico was interested in 17 year interested in 17 year olds anyway and had about three words of English which didn't help their scenes together. Equally unhelpful was DeSica's arriving for work unprepared and hungover. DeSica would show up looking green from his hangover with Marlene already on board, looking greener from sick seasickness. The only thing they had in common was color. Taylor remembered Marlene was kept busy teasing Arthur O'Connell, who was madly in love with her. She used to leap on him, wrap her legs around him, and bite his ears to drive him crazy. So there's a lot of funny stories about the making of the Monte Carlo um, story. But Marlene Dietrich was actually convinced by Billy Wilder to, to do this movie, um, which was her good friend. I'm going to give this movie two and a half stars. That's pretty much my rating that I give to movies that are worth seeing. They're, they're good. They're worth seeing. But probably not going to want to see it again. Um, that's going to wrap it for this review. And that was it. Oh, actually, I do have some pictures from the movie. I, I always almost forget to show my pictures. But here we go. There's Marlene in the Monte Carlo story I have a lot of pictures with Arthur O'Connell okay, there's just Jessica and Dietrich but that was it guys Hope you enjoy the movie. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I come out with reviews all the time. Have a good night.